All right. Uh, hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome back. <clears throat> again, we'll go to the little short floor and the uh, robot that has some arms. And we're working on a, a, a flow rate that we need for this robot to walk. And that is going to be more easily discussed with a different drawing. And we'll see if we can get that one to come up. And uh, we've got our um, discussion here in writing, and I'll come back to that in a second. You, what we want to look at right this second here is to notice again that we are looking at uh, a cycle of walking where the um, right foot starts out with the toe of the right foot on this little yellow rectangle and the robot cycles through all of its steps and when it's done with one complete cycle of walking the uh, right um, toe is once again right near to or sitting on top of this yellow rectangle and we can measure with actual measurements what is one complete cycle it's five feet nine and one sixteenth inches or 69 inches for this robot now, it's a fairly big robot but all of this can be scaled but for this particular robot that we're talking about 69 inches per cycle and this is just showing some of the in-between stances but it's 69 inches and once we have a um, specification of the length of the stride in terms of inches then we can do some absolutely just plain old calculation type stuff And we'll see if we can get this. To come into view. And this is a bunch of just writing here. But combat for the Army. Two and a half miles an hour. Feet per hour. Feet per minute. Inches per minute. 69 inches. is 38 cycles of walking per minute. This is another set. The, all of these, where all these numbers came from in much more detail, are on the website. But we need 854 cubic inches of fluid per cycle. So that comes to this much fluid per minute. That's cubic feet per minute. That's gallons per minute. At the full 400 PSI, we need 32 horsepower worth of power to put 140 gallons per minute up to 100 up to 400 pounds per square inch but one of the issues that we realized was that for one half of the cycle of the walking the pistons are not moving a leg that has any weight on it so we don't need the full 400 pounds uh, we looked at what are the big pistons, the ones that are the anti-gravity pistons. They are the knee, hip, flex, hip, knee, flex, upper, hip, flex, lower. All of this is detailed much more clearly on the website. But uh, the bottom line that comes out of this is uh, summarized down below showing that some of the flow we need to be at the full 400 pounds per square inch and some of the flow we need at much less pounds per square inch because we're not moving that much that much weight so the final flow values that we get using this way of splitting apart the uh, pressure requirements for the fluid and remember that um, one pound, excuse me, one gallon per minute of fluid at 400 pounds per square inch is the same amount of available energy as four gallons per minute at one-fourth that pressure. 
and there are easy ways to convert fluid under one pressure flowing into fluid under a lower pressure where there's more fluid flowing. That's not a big issue. So the final conclusion on all of this is we need 64 gallons per minute at 400 pounds per square inch and 76 gallons per minute at 80 pounds per square inch. And uh, the tino, final end point output power result for this robot walking at this speed where this robot has this stride length is we need an 18.6 horsepower engine output at the pump. And that's the, uh, the value that needs to be remembered and understanding that this is a value that is unique and specific for this robot doing this way of walking on this type of terrain with this speed of walking.